So our next speaker is Dean Yu, who will tell us about virtual homological spectral radii for automorphism. Thanks. Uh, yeah, so today I wanted to talk about this uh, automorphism of surfaces. And uh, I wanted to start with a uh, simple looking question. Um, this is actually asked by Mark Newton. Uh, take this. I'll state a, a simple version of it. Uh, suppose you have a, a surface, uh, automorphism of a surface. Let's say if it's a closed orientable surface. Let's say a genus greater equal to two, and uh, and you have um, this to be pseudo Anosov. Um, then the question here is uh, whether or not you can find some finite cover. of this such that F lifts to be an automorphism of the covering space. And moreover, um, oh, so this is a finite cover. And uh, the requirement is that you want um, the induced action on the homology. Mm -hmm. has some eigenvalue outside the unit circle. examples to convince yourself that this is a question that makes sense. For example, um, uh, there are many pseudo-anosophs in the Torelli group, so they do not act non-trivially just on the homology level of the surface as itself. So you have to pass to some final cover in order to see some um, non-trivial eigenmap. Non-trivial I always mean outside the unit circle in this talk. Um, uh, and also, if you have, let's say you have a um, surface automorphism that is uh, just dentist along um, disjoint curves, then when, uh, for whatever finite cover you pass to, you will always have these uh, eigenvalues to, um, to be on the unit circle. So at least you want some pseudo of um, components in the Nielsen surface decomposition in order that you can answer this question positively. Mm. Uh, of course, you can ask this question for general um, pseudo loss of k. Uh, I mean, general um, automorphism that contains some pseudo loss components. And uh, mm, <coughs> if you think further, uh, you can easily reduce to the essential case of pseudo loss of ones. So um, this is a, a, a question that makes sense. Mm. And I guess. It's either I just state the main results and just um, mention some related um, known results, then, then I'll, I'll try to just um, go into some idea of this uh, proof here. So the theorem I wanted to tell you is that um, basically uh, you, you have an a positive answer to the above question. Um, and uh, I guess more generally, uh, if your uh, automobile has stood on lots of components, you will have a positive answer to that. Mm. Mm. So I guess I wanted to uh, at least mention a number of important related results. Um, one thing is that maybe you wonder where this a uh, question come from. Mm. Um, I mean, first of all, it's a natural question. And uh, I guess Macmillan 
um, consider this question because he uh, found this example. Um, actually, he found that um, in general, you might expect that this uh, uh, virtual eigenvalue would um, realize the dilatation rate or the entropy of the uh, of the pseudo mass of automorphism, but um, I guess this is sometimes referred to as a Marcuse gap theorem. He actually showed that uh, um, for many examples of pseudo mass of maps, uh, you can only assume that. Uh, I mean, you, you have this uh, inequality that this is a dilatation rate of the pseudo analysis map. So this epsilon here, what he announces is that he, uh, he, he proved is that you can actually find some constants that depends only on the um, surface of morphism itself. Um, so that whenever you pass your finite fiber, you, you will never uh, be able to reach the circulation um, eigenvalue itself. But there's always a gap. So he uh, can step back and ask this uh, uh, more, more modest question whether or not you can find some non trivial in that. And one of the uh, first attempt is uh, actually um, done by Thomas Kuberta. Mm. He didn't show uh, that you can get a non trivial eigenvalue, but you can actually find, uh, I mean, for general surface automorphism, you can actually, if it's non trivial, then you can actually find some finite cover. So that any conjugate of this lift is a non-trivial lift. So, So, briefly speaking, uh, basically it says that. Uh, Non-trivial would imply uh, virtually homologically non-trivial. But those new eigenvalues may just lie on the uh, unit circle. Sir, can you say again what that means? Oh, this means that if you have some automorphism that is uh, uh, non uh, that that is uh, not isolable to identity. Then you can find some regular finite cover um, so that any possible leap to that regular cover uh, is a non trivial homological. I see, but no, yeah. no control values. No. Um, and uh, <laughs> so you can just always, just to summarize, you can always take yourself out of the type, out of the um, Torelli like possible. I, I don't quite remember the details of it. I'm just trying to rephrase what you said. I think, I think you're saying yeah. you started with an F that was in the, was in the trailer group, mm -hmm. whilst recovering it going to the trailer. Right, right, right. 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 Where, that's where, right. where no lift is in the trailer. Right. Yeah. 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 You know, you always, you always have some choices of lifts. If you compose with the deck transformation, you will get another lift, and you want to say that for whatever composition like this, you will get an attribute. Uh, mm, right. And uh, uh, I guess Hong Sun um, proved this um, um, criterion. He actually related this question to mm, uh, question about the modern measure of uh, multivariable Alexander polynomial. So I guess I'll mention a criteria that is related, uh, that, that essentially uses his results. So, um,
when I get to that point, I, I can explain more details of that. Do you have a more Hi. Right. Very important. Um, and uh, independent of this uh, theorem, um, Asaf Qadari has also proved, um, I guess he also proved this uh, uh, re results. I mean, the surface has non trivial boundary, then you can, um, um, you can reduce this, uh, I guess you can think of this question as a question of, about outer FN. And he actually proved some um, general results for, um, fully irreducible elements of uh, outer FN. Um, it does. It does cover the boundary case, um, but not the not the other kind of case. Um, and also, there is, I guess, there is a um, difference here that his proof actually constructs uh, look, looks at some um, certain variants of the lower central series of uh, uh, of the free group, and then by by looking at that, um, at some level, you will be able to. Uh, see some non-trivial eigenvalue that's uh, roughly uh, the approach for the free group case. And uh, for surface, especially for closed surface groups, um, because you have an extra relator that you need to consider. So, um, so I, guess, uh, um, I guess it's harder to find some um, lower central series that give you some non-trivial eigenvalue. Instead, what I, um, uh, what my approach considered is some finite covering constructed from um, spatial tribulation and the uh, film. So, um, so in this sense, I guess uh, the result is more related to the theme of this uh, conference. Um, all right. So, um, so I think in the, in the rest of the talk, I, I will try to go into some details of the ideas. Actually, I in, uh, in the past few months I tried to um, give the talk, um, like one hour talks, uh, at various uh, um, places. Uh, I, I found it really hard to cover the whole story. So instead of doing that, I'll try to for this um, for this talk I'll try to tell you um, how you can gradually see uh, the topological and the geometric ingredients involved in this um, in this theorem and uh, uh, at least to try to tell you some criteria that will guarantee this uh, uh, non-trivial virtual eigenvalue um, then also uh, I guess that the last part of the talk we can try to relate it to to the virtual specialization I'll tell you where are those quasi convex subjects that you want to kill and that's, uh, that's basically the plan. Okay. Mm. So <laughs> you can try. Uh, you can try to think about this question itself. Um, you have a so the starting point is that you have a an automorphism of the surface. Um, you basically compute the homological eigenvalue by some homological um, just by the first by the definition. Um, then, at first, what is it related to? Um, I guess one starting point for this talk is that we can think of this problem as a problem for three manifolds. The most natural way to relate this um, surface automorphism is by considering its uh, mapping torus. So, I'll try to consider the mapping torus of, uh, let's say, given. We'll try to consider the 
uh, mapping torus for uh, this uh, automorphism. I'm going to think of it to be the so called dynamical mapping torus. You, uh, you identify x1 with uh, fx0. Okay, so from the mapping torus, you can actually um, see some of these uh, algebraic invariants uh, inside it. First of all, um, uh, for closed surfaces, the, for example, the back number of this is just the um, 1 plus, I guess, dimension of uh, get some easy formulas that can tell, tell you the batting number of the mapping torus and uh, the homological eigenvalues are clearly related to the characteristic polynomial but for topologists you can immediately uh, identify this quantity for fiber bundles with uh, so called the Alexander polynomial so um, the Alexander polynomial for this mapping torus Associate to the uh, maybe I should the first. So if you have a mapping torus, then there is a canonical um, cohomology class that corresponds to the that you concrete do to the fiber. Then associated to this uh, um, cohomology class, you can speak of its uh, Alexander polynomial. It has a very uh, easy formula. It's just the determinant um, of one minus one minus t uh, f star. Is that it? Mm -hmm. So. Remember, there are some ambiguities in defining the Alexander polynomial. Um, this thing should, um, is usually considered to be some Laurent polynomial, but it's uh, depending on the cellular structure that you choose, it can differ by plus or minus t to the sum n. So uh, in, in this case, this is uh, really an equality. Um, uh, uh, up to this uh, ambiguity. So, I guess from the Alexander polynomial itself, you can immediately tell um, some um, some easy criterion for getting a non-trivial eigenvalue, just non-trivial homological eigenvalue. Um, if you think about this expression, it's all. Uh, if you expand it, it's all always monic. <coughs> something like t to the the, the degree is always the uh, the big number of the surface, and then it plus some a one t, <coughs> and you have a symmetry, and you will get one <coughs> minus one. Um, okay, so let me ma mention just an uh, um, easy observation. Um, you can see that if for this quantity A, A1, this coefficient, um, is it okay if I write in yellow? Oh. Um, so, uh, very easy in algebra of polynomial theory. If this is greater than um, 2g, then you can tell that uh, um,
clear enough? Clear enough? Mm. But the problem is that this condition is really hard to achieve. Um, probably uh, the most difficult part is that this is actually a quantity that considers how large this uh, the, uh, this coefficient is. That's much, it, it's very hard to achieve in general for estimation coefficients inside some polynomial invariance. Um, what is relatively hard and easier is that uh, usually you can tell whether or not a coefficient is non-trivial. Um, but you know this is just uh, one variable polynomial. If you have a non-trivial coefficient, it's just one. So we want to get more of such uh, coefficients. The way to do this is, is that instead of considering this one variable polynomial, you consider a multivariable polynomial and then try to identify some of those places that has a non-trivial mm -hmm. coefficient. Roughly speaking, if you have enough certain coefficients, uh, non-trivial coefficients, then you can guarantee this uh, non-trivial eigenvalue. Um, to explain this, um, mm, let me consider this uh, multivariable version of uh, Alexander polynomials. What you do is that instead of looking at this uh, single cohomology class, you can consider uh, some general, like you, you can allow this uh, cohomology class to vary. Um, there are some details of the definition, but in the end of the day, you will get some so-called multivariable Alexander polynomial. Um, denoted as, I mean, I denote it as a sharp here to distinguish from certain usual notation of Alexander polynomial. It's defined to be something, um, and keep it in a black box. Uh, and uh, it just turned out that this quantity should, instead of living in the you can think of this to be uh, Z of Z, where this Z is roughly the range of this uh, uh, homology of Z. Okay, so uh, just sort of parallel to what you saw there, um, this will give you some quantity that lives in the free parts of the uh, mapping torus. <laughs> and by this uh, free part, I just mean this homology module of the first part. Mm. Uh, again, there are some ambiguity up to plus or minus mm. some elements of this uh, homology group. Um, <coughs> and uh, since we are working with not a general three manifold, but a surface bundle, um, there is actually some nice way to express the one variable polynomial and also the multivariable polynomial in terms of certain dynamical property of the um, surface automorphism. Surface automorphism. Um, so let's start with a, a simple one. This uh, one variable one, it's related to the <coughs> left sheets, um, I guess, what's it called? Left sheet trace formula or something? Um, but anyway, um, for pseudo Anosov maps, you can write the above algebraically defined um, formula uh, in a more dynamical form. You want m to be just natural numbers, and then you co consider the n periodic points of the surface automorphism F. Mm. Okay, so what you get here is that you get some quantity. This is a fixed point index 
for the um, For the point P, since P is not P is a periodic point, so it's not a fixed point for F, but it's a fixed point for F to the n. So this is a fixed point index divided by n, uh, then times mm, the P to the n. Yeah. So you get some expression like this. Mm, um, so I guess this is sometimes called the left shift. Uh, so exp doesn't mean exponentiate. It means exponentiate. Oh. Uh, so the uh, so let I should explain. So here you get you, here you get you you think of this to be a polynomial in T starting with one, mm -hmm. and then you think of what by some uh, here to be something inside a priori it should be something that lies in uh, the formal power series three starting with one obviously okay. uh, and this exp is just a, a formal expression I'm not considering any convergence property for it just algebraically uh, think of this to be as usual. Mm. Okay, so you, you can actually see that for any finite power of t, you can decide what the coefficient of it is. It's a just finite expression. Mm. Okay, so this is uh, uh, this is uh, so called the left shift theta function. We'll try to look, uh, look more closely to it um, in a minute. But what is the corresponding part mm. on this multivariable side? Um, turns out mm, that uh, <coughs> it's almost the same as the expert in itself. Um, but you want something that lies in, let's say, the formal power, <laughs> ser uh, formal power series in variables that lies in this ring. And uh sorry? So you're saying that that polynomial is equal to the it's not the smoking It's not the denominator of that. Mm, no, I think that's just uh, just an equality for what is inside here is something like log of the um, okay. So on the right hand side, what you get uh, is that you, roughly you, you want to change this T to be something that represents a homology group. That so will give you some at least a meaningful expression. Um, turns out you don't have to change what has been written down, I mean the constant part, just keep the same. Uh, but here instead of putting a single letter T inside it, you put um, this corresponding where What I mean is just like this. You know, your summation is summing over um, these uh, periodic points. Uh, at some point, um, maybe you have some.
So, for example, maybe you have some periodic points. Um, let's say you have a two periodic points. And at the first time, when you run the suspension flow, it might not come back to itself. And then later, if you continue going along suspension flow, it just come back to itself again. And this yellow curve is what I mean. So this is a P, and uh, for uh, if P is a two periodic point, um, your corresponding gamma two P is just this uh, oriented curve, and it just takes the cohomology, uh, the homology class. It will represent some homology class in the in the first homology. Okay. Um, Oh, okay. So where does this expression itself live in? It lives in, formally, it just lives in the Find the correct terms, it's really parallel to what is seen on the middle board, uh, except that you have more information about this uh, 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 about these individual terms. You are grouping them in finer subgroups. It's uh, it's containing the multiple. Uh, this is smaller, I guess. It's smaller. It's it's continuous. Uh, multiple three, I guess, it uh, allows the fractal powers, but this is not. If you replace this, this is pure probability. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So this is just uh, just formal expression for um, for this uh, Alexander polynomial, mm -hmm. and it's. Multivariable version. <coughs> uh, right. Turns out, um, you know, one thing is lying polynomial ring, one thing is lying formal um, completion. But turns out, it just lies in the sub. Um, all the things for the exponents, uh, uh, exponentials, they all just lie in the. Uh, finite subgroup of this uh, uh, of this formal combination, so you really get the identity get up to uh, up to uh, yeah, on the factor. Mm. Okay, so as I said, uh, instead of looking at this uh, the, uh, this elementary observation, uh, we wanted to use kind of this information about this. Uh, uh, multivariable uh, expansion. I wanted to see some non-trivial coefficients in order to get the um, criterion for non-trivial eigenvalue. So for this purpose, uh, we need to try to find a good way to understand this uh, uh, these expressions. you think of a uh, multivariable Alexander polynomial schematically, I'm gonna uh, think of it or just draw it on a grid. Um, let's see. If you think of this as this is a plane and the grid points are just the um, points of the H13. So 
these gray points, each one of them, would correspond to a point of this homology group. Then your then your multivariable Alexander polynomial, for example, just some random example, it, it will just be some um, be some uh, assignments of non-trivial numbers to a finite number of points, and they just sum them up. It just tells you some uh, some some elements in the group ring for this free homology. Uh, um, so let me just uh, do some random example. Uh, you might have a coefficient one here, and uh, maybe I'll choose a basis for this. Let's say it's, if you have bet number two, then you have two variables. Um, and here you might have a coefficient, so let's say two x, y, and for this point, maybe uh, um, just uh, three x randomly. Um, and uh, usually you will have a symmetry for this uh, multivariable polynomial. That means there is a center for the Newton polygon and uh, um, the, 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 this uh, polynomial is symmetric with respect to that center. Um, if your if this is uh, the width is just the genus of your surface, for example, maybe four, then you'll get get uh, um, For example, your your uh, Alexander multivariable Alexander polynomial may look like this, just summing up all the terms in the yellow letters. And this is your uh, this is a Newton polygon, just a convex hull for your Alexander polynomial. Mm. Uh, <laughs> So, um, uh, what happens if, uh, how do you, for example, how do you understand the expression inside this uh, uh, exponential? Formally, you just take log for this expression. If you take log, what the picture you see is that uh, you cannot really tell precisely what happens in, inside this, uh, uh, inside this picture. But at least on the extremal race, it's much easier to, to see what the expansion is. You have 1 plus 2x, and uh, your log expansion, you know, this is your delta sharp f. And uh, after taking log, you will get something that will just be the uh, you know, you, you just use this uh, expansion for log of 1 minus a equals 1 plus uh, uh, a plus a squared by a cubed, a cubed by a Just use this formal expansion. Now what you see is that along the way, the only contribution is from the term, this term itself. There's no other contribution from lower terms. So along this um, where you will get the log expansion will look like a cone. It lying inside a cone that corresponds to one. Yeah, there might be some stuff going on there. But there would be nothing outside this uh, cone as I draw. Okay, this is some just some uh, algebraic analysis for the uh, for for the expression uh, of multivariable Alexander polynomial. Then the next thing you do is that you try to use some three manifold topology to give some bound uh, give some Bound for this uh, uh, 
for this polygon. I guess I should say that um, the corresponding um, criterion for this observation is roughly that you want um, this uh, you want this polygon to have many um, many faces. I mean, you want this cone to have uh, sufficiently many faces. Um, but it's not. Um, very convenient to state it at this level. I want to then pass to the um, pass to the certain known pole and its uh, expansion, and the, and then um, and then I want to say that okay, at some point this polygon can fill up this uh, certain known pole, and then uh, if the certain known pole has uh, enough uh, faces, then you will be able to get a reasonable criterion for that. So. So there is uh, another fact of three manifold topology that we need to prove is that the Newton polygon in general it would be a polyhole. Um, but the Newton polygon of the multivariable eigen polynomial, um, there is a nice bound for it. It is contained by the dual um, It is contained by a sort dual sort of normal. If you draw a small picture, um you know, certain norm ball is some ball that is uh, some norm that is assigned to the cohomology. But we're looking at the homology, first homology. What you see here is that, um, <coughs> in general, your certain norm ball would be something like, uh, you know, it's uh, since your uh, mapping torus is hyperbolic. So you will get some certain non ball that is non degenerate. Um, and uh, your uh, Alexander polynomial is something that is defined up to uh, multiplication with uh, non trivial group elements. That means the polygon um, is defined up to translation around uh, in, in this. Uh, in In this plane, so um, you can compare this uh, at, uh, Newton polygon as a convex hull of the Alexander polynomial um, with the with a certain known ball. You are not comparing this polygon in this place with a certain known ball, but you you see that if you uh, if you translate this certain known ball. Um, to the place so that the dual vertex is put at zero, then in this way, certain non ball will always contain uh, this Newton polygon. That's a basic topological fact about this uh, comparison. Then, uh, if you take the log uh, for that, it will tell you You will have a log expansion just as the, uh, I mean, uh, if you will get some polygon that is um, drawn just by um, starting from this vertex and uh, um, take the colon uh, of this uh, shifted polygon. So this is a log picture for this comparison. I guess um, I can also draw like a uh, higher dimensional picture. If if your mapping torus, let's say, have dimension three, the corresponding picture may look like this. 
this plane is like the kernel of the phi, and then uh, and then your Newton polygon, your 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 Alexander polynomial may look like a polygon that is not necessarily symmetric. Uh, I mean, it has a central symmetry, so it's roughly something like this. And if you take the Cohen just a log expansion, you will get some um, polygon that. And uh, I'm saying that in general, you will have some comparison between the uh, uh, Newton polygon of the Alexander polynomial with the certain non ball. So the certain non ball expansion, the white cone here, in general, would not necessarily have the same shape of the section as a round cone. But anyways, it will contain this from when this is like a, a higher dimensional picture for <coughs> So inside it, I, I hope you can see this picture. So, so inside, uh, outside this white cone is just a log of certain number expanding at this vertex. And then inside it, you get this um, cone corresponding to the multivariable Alexander polynomial, uh, like this. So in this, I guess, oh, almost perfect. Um, but at least, I, I guess, it, if you have this picture in mind, you will be able to state the criterion for um, getting a non-trivial eigenvalue. What I wanted to say is that um, there are basically two things I want to do. Um, all the things I stated at this point are just about the mapping torus uh, and itself. That, uh, I haven't passed to find the cover, but you can also uh, consider the same uh, uh, the same objects uh, for finite covers. Then what I wanted is that for some um, for some uh, just just before passing to the finite cover, what I wanted is that if I have um, enough faces of this white cone, and suppose those faces are all achieved by this uh, brown cone, then I will be able to uh, get some estimates for the multivariate, uh, for the model measure of the multivariable Alexander polynomial. That is, uh, that is one thing. Of course, it just depends on uh, what automorphism you are given. Then you want to translate this a criterion to be one on the finite cover. So, um, the first thing is that for some finite cover, suppose there are sufficiently many. Um, If I denote this white cone to be D, it can be um, reinterpreted as uh, uh, free this uh, uh, cone of periodic uh, homological directions. Um, so if you, if I have sufficiently many faces for the um, cone of the finite cover, um, sufficiently means that it's uh, uh, it's no. if, if I'm just considering D itself I want to submit many cones uh, uh, face, faces uh, if I consider a finite cover I want to consider submitting many face orbits corresponding to the um, deck transformation okay. and uh, uh, And the second thing is that I want them all be achieved by mm, the multivariable Alexander polynomial 
of the cover. If I can do these two things, then I will be able to uh, show that uh, using Sun's criteria, I will be able to show the non trivial eigenvalue outside the unit circle property. Okay, and for doing these two things, um, since I'm, I guess I'm out of time, so I'm just saying that uh, what I wanted to do is that I will try to, uh, since I get this uh, topological, I mean dynamical object of this uh, white cone, so roughly what I want to, what, what I could do is that for each co-dimensional phase, extremal phase, I can sort of uh, associate a number of quasi convex subgroups to it. It's not necessarily just the um, kernel of it. It's uh, constructed from the certain Markov partition and the transition graph. Uh, that, that is the first thing. And then, um, because I want to find some sufficiently many phases, I can try to um, uh, do some, I wanted to do some um, fitting constructions so that uh, I just kill those uh, quasi convex subgroup corresponding to these phases. Uh, and uh, still, I get a hyperbolic virtually special group which have infinite Betty number. Then I pass to find a cover for that group. I will get some, um, uh, some new Betty number uh, of the original group that cannot be spent by this extremal phase. In that way, you can get some new uh, phase um, that can achieve that criterion. Uh, and then mm, I guess after that it's relatively easier to get the um, it's relatively uh, easier to get the second thing done you just do the uh, like reverse achieving virtual fiber and thing to get the algebraic monomial to uh, to detect these phases so in that way you can roughly get all this done mm, yeah so I'm already out of time so I'll just stop here in the Cronin's theorem, there was this epsilon that depended on S and F. Hmm. Do your tools say anything about epsilon? Can you get epsilon tending to zero for some of the family, for instance? Uh, yeah, that's, a, that, that's a actually a pretty good question. Um, I, I guess, um, I mean, I, um, I have some, also some earlier results, like uh, applying this uh, virtue specialness and uh, separation arguments to get some like um, non-trivial domination property, or uh, Hongbi soon has some non-trivial torsion properties. But all those properties doesn't give you, uh, don't give you an uh, effective bound for those quantities. So um, in this way, I guess, uh, I, I actually I tried to get some quantitative estimate for this whole argument, but turns out since you cannot control the um, covering degree when you pass to your finite cover, there's no way that you can. Uh, usually you will just get some non-trivial eigenvalue that is uh, very small, uh, or you can just have a very small lower bound. Um, and uh, I don't, I don't know what's the uh, effect is done for Maximilian. Um, so does this do, do all of the fibers then? The monodromies have non-trivial, uh, are eigenvalue absolute value bigger than one? Um, I mean, is this condition that you talked about um, mm -hmm. achieving, you know, sufficiently many? Right. Uh, this yeah. Yeah. Is, is, so for any for any monodromy um, mm. in that same fiber phase. Um, right. This is actually related to the criterion uh, of Sun. So uh, what you can immediately get from this arrow is that uh, you can show the multivariable uh, multi polynomial have non-trivial mother measure, and uh, then um, then it tells you, you can then pass to some further abelian cover, cyclic abelian cover, 
so that the corresponding cover will have a non-trivial eigenvalue. Um, so in a sense, when you get uh, a statement, uh, a non-triviality from multivariable uh, example number of this place, then generically, uh, you will get non-trivial eigenvalues for different monotones. So I think that that will, mm. yeah, there might be some single, uh, some could I mean one singular sets that you need to avoid, but generically that will help.